Hi, folks, thank you for tuning in. And for today's lesson, we are going to talk about a very simple right hand plucking pattern using four very basic chords. And a quick heads up is that there's a handwritten set of notes linked in the description box. So you can just download that and I hope that it's going to be a good aid for this class. Okay, so let me just play this four chord sequence for you using a very simple right hand plucking pattern. And here goes, the chords are G, D, E minor, and the C chord. So here goes, one, two, three, go, and G, two, three, four, two, a D, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, and a C, two, three, let's repeat that, G, two, three, four, and a D, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, and a C, two, three, four. All right, so let me just share a bit about the chords that we are using before we move on to the right hand plucking technique. So the first chord we have, it's basically a four fingered G chord. Right? And the way I play that is I have my index finger on the 2nd fret of your 5th string. I have my middle finger on the 3rd fret of your 6th string. And then I have my ring finger and my pinky on the 3rd fret of the 1st and the 2nd string. Okay, So just a quick heads up is that the G chord is a 6th string chord. So whenever you're strumming this open G chord, you just want to make sure that you're striking all six strings from the low E all the way up to the high E string like this okay so that's a G chord and let's move on to the next chord which is a D chord all right so for the D chord what I have is I have my index finger on the second fret of your third string the middle finger on the second fret as well but on the first string and last but not least you have the ring finger on the third fret of your second string okay so the D chord is going to be a four string chord right? so which means that when you're strumming this D chord you just want to make sure that you start from the fourth string down to the first string like this all right that's the second chord the D chord and let's move on to the third chord that we have that's your E minor chord and I do play this E minor chord slightly differently from some of the folks. So I'm using my index finger on the second fret of your fifth string and then I have my middle finger on the second fret of your fourth string. Right? Now some folks might prefer the middle finger and the ring finger, that's fine, but my preference is to use the index finger and the middle finger. Alright? So this E minor chord is going to be a six string chord. So Whenever you strum, we strike from the low E string all the way up to the high E, all six strings. So here goes, a one, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four. Okay. And now let's move on to the last chord that we have. And we are going to use the good old C chord. So check this out, I have my index finger on the 1st fret of your 2nd string, middle finger is going to be on the 2nd fret of your 4th string, and last but not least, the ring finger is going to be on the 3rd fret of your 5th string. Alright, so this C chord is a 5 string chord, which means that once you strike the string, you want to start from the 5th string and end on the 1st string, like this. Try and see if you are able to strum along with me. One, two, three, four. So C, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. All right. So let me just do a quick recap now. Okay, we are going to try and strum four down strokes for G chord, four down strokes for your D chord four downstrokes for your E minor chord and four downstrokes for your C chord 
bearing in mind the correct number of strings to strum. All right, this is important when you try and port this four chords over to a plucking sequence. All right, so G will be six, D will be four, E minor will be six again, and C will be five. Okay, so just four downstrokes for each chord, and here goes. One, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four, and D, four strings. E minor, six strings. Going to C, five strings. Move back to six strings for G. Move to four strings for D. Then to six strings for E minor. And then to five strings for C. Alright, so always remember the G chord will be a six string chord. The D chord will be a four string chord. The E minor will be a six string chord. And then the C chord is going to move to a five string chord. Alright? So, why is this important? Because if we were to port this info over to a plucking sequence, the thumb has to shift according to the lowest note of the chord. Alright? So, for example, if we're playing a G chord on the left hand, and now we want to try and do a plucking pattern. The index, middle finger, and the ring finger will always be on the first three strings at the very beginning. Now, the thumb is going to take care of the lowest note. Okay? Now, but because we play the G chord as a sixth string chord, the thumb is going to start on the sixth string right here. So, check this out. I'm going to pluck thumb on six, index on three, middle on two, and the ring finger right here, it's going to be on the first string. So check this out. I'm going to plug all four strings in tandem and the motion is going to be inwards towards the center of your palm. Okay, and just remember to keep a distance between your thumb and your index finger. We do not want to keep these three fingers too straight up like this. So keep your index finger middle and ring finger curl up nicely and ready to pluck. Okay, so here goes. One, two, three, go. G, two, three, four. Okay, just make sure that you don't dig your fingers too deep into the strings because you might get a very kind of like a very harsh sound. So just a bit of contact with the string and try and get a very gentle sound with your plucking. Okay? We don't need too much muscle there, don't need too much pressure, just a light motion would suffice. Alright? Then let's move on to the second chord. We have a D chord. Okay? So D chord is going to be a four string chord. My index, middle, and ring stays, but my thumb is going to shift from the sixth string to the fourth string. Alright? And this is how it sounds like. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's how the D chord should sound like. Now let's move on to the third chord. It's going to be an E minor chord. And now from the D chord, which is a four string chord, Moving over to E minor, which is a 6th string chord. You're going to shift your thumb from the 4th string to the 6th string and plug the same set of strings. Alright. So, that's what we have. And one of the very common questions I get is why are you still placing your index finger and your middle finger on the 2nd fret when you're not striking those strings? Right? So I do have the habit of keeping my fingers there unless I have to play notes that are higher up the neck. All right? But when I'm playing just this open E minor chord, what I do is I'm just keeping my index finger and my middle finger on the same fret, 
right there just in case if I have to plug a different bass note or a different right hand pattern that requires the fifth and the fourth string so they're kind of like just insurance fingers there yeah all right so but I'll leave it to you for this exercise you'll find it written in the notes those two notes are in brackets so you're free to keep your fingers there or just to play this this way that's fine all right but my habit is still to maintain my index and the middle finger and moving on the last chord is going to be your C chord and now from the sixth string you're going to shift your thumb down to the fifth string to play the C chord so this is how the C chord sounds like one two three go and C two three four C two So here comes the tough part is you want to try and make sure that you're able to maintain the beats okay while you're switching the chords on your left hand and switching the bass notes as well okay so let just let me play it once for you and this is how it sounds like we're gonna do four plucks for each of those chords a one two three four and G two three four and D two three four and E minor two three four and a C two three four all right so the best way to get this all linked up smoothly is to slow it really slow okay so focus on the flow of the chord change and if you find any common notes try and keep your fingers right there so for example if I play from a G chord to a D chord you'll find that the common note is going to be the ring finger so when I switch those chords I'm keeping the ring finger right there from G to a D all right and then E minor there's no common note so we just simply have to practice and get used to this motion and then last but not least Check this out, from an E minor over to a C chord, the middle finger stays. So that's my E minor chord. And when I switch over, that's my C chord. Okay? So let's try and work on this together. A one, two, three, four, and G, two, three, and change to D, two, three, and change to E minor, two, three, four, and C, two, three, four. Okay, one more round. One, two, three, go. And G, two, three, four, and D, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, and a C. So once you get comfortable with this four chord sequence, the G, D, E minor, and C, now what happens is you can try and change the sequence of the chords just to practice how your thumb shifts. All right. So for example, if you look at the chord progression practice on the last two lines of the page, we have a G, E minor, C, and D. All right. And then the second exercise starts from E minor going to a C to a G and then moving on to a D chord. Okay, and for exercise one, G, E minor, C, D, this is how it sounds like. A one, two, three, go. And G, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, and a C, two, three, four, and a D, two, three. Let's repeat this sequence. G, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three, four, and a C, two, three, four, and a D, two, three, four, and... All right, and the 
the second exercise sounds like this we lead off with the E minor chord so pay attention to getting your thumb to move to the correct bass note and here goes one two three go and E minor two three four and a C two three four and G on six two three four and D on four two three back to E on six two three going to C on five two three four back to G on six three four and D two three four all right so what's going to happen is you have to practice those chord sequence slowly okay and make sure that as you're plucking those chord changes every single note is ringing clearly you're getting to the right bass notes for the chord changes and make sure that you're keeping a good timing throughout okay so thank you folks bye